Hi, it's Scott Allen. In part two of the video, let's start by looking at the advantages of having a 10 who takes the ball to the line. Here Christian Lealofano gives some good examples. He takes the ball to the line, commits defenders before he passes to the receiver. That gives the receiver some space to operate in, whether it's an outside pass or an inside pass. Lealofano is good at it because his first step when he takes the ball is to move forward. As I showed in part one of the video, one of the problems with Beric Barnes at 10 is that he starts too deep so very rarely takes the ball to the line before passing. But as you can see here, when he does start flatter, he is quite good at taking the ball to the line and creating space. Here, Kirtley Bill shows how it's done. By taking the ball to the line, he attracts the Argentine defenders, and that's what opens up the hole for Yuani. And here against England, he'll take the ball to the line, this time turns it back inside for Palu and gives him just a little bit of room. And in this example, taking the ball to the line, he's able to put Barnes into a little bit of space on the outside of the defenders. However, one of the big drawbacks with Kirtley playing in the front line is he does have a tendency to run across the field and pass the ball before he gets to the line, which allows the defenders to drift out onto the ball receiver. James O'Connor doesn't have that issue. He's very direct, playing north-south. You can see him here taking the ball to the line, holding the inside defenders, and that gives space for the ball carrier to run into. Similarly, Quade Cooper is very good at attracting the defence and opening up space for his ball runners whether it's going through the line and then making an offload, or taking the ball to the line, challenging the defence so that they're in two minds. When he does that, he holds the defenders inside and creates space on the outside. As you can see in these examples, Cooper is very good at taking the ball to the line and then passing just before he's engaged by the defence, which creates the hole. It's something the Wallabies really missed this year with Kirtley Beale and Beric Barnes playing at 10. And it's one of the big benefits of either Leo Lafano, O'Connor or Cooper being the Wallabies 10. When your 10 takes the ball to the line, they're also an option to run the ball. And that places further pressure on the defence because they've got more to think about. Beric Barnes is a solid enough runner. He's better when he cuts back inside rather than going outside. But he's hardly the type of runner that strikes fear into the opposition. When Kirtley Beale's playing at fullback, he is that type of runner. But when he's playing in the front line, he has a tendency to run across field too much, which makes him an easy target and also takes away any space from his outside runners when he does offload the ball. Your number 10 controls the direction of the attack, and it's something that Kirtley didn't do well in 2012. Christian Lealofano is a more direct runner, but he does have the ability to move laterally to make holes in the defensive line. James O'Connor runs very straight for a number 10, but his amazing footwork and his blinding acceleration bamboozles most defences he comes up against. Quake Cooper's got the footwork and the acceleration. He's very deceptive when he goes to the line, and that often leads to half breaks. Support runners need to stay close for the offload, or for the pass just before he goes into contact. He's a genuine threat when he's running the ball, and you can see that the way most defences handle him. They hold off, waiting to see what he'll do. But as you can see in these examples, even when he's in traffic, he's still got the ability to make it into small spaces and gain metres. I'd say he's the most potent of the Wallabies running number 10s. Here's a great overhead clip showing all those elements combined. Carter's got the vision to know where the ball's got to go. He takes it to the line, makes a great flat pass, which gives Corey Jane some space. And then the inside players maintaining space for the outside players to combine for a great try. When you look at those various elements, the obvious two candidates for me, for the Wallabies' number 10 position in 2013, are Quade Cooper and James O'Connor. Leo Lafano is a talent, but it's a big ask for a debutante to come into a line series. Of course, that's on the basis that the Wallabies want to go with an attacking game plan. If they want to use the Robbie Dean's restricted game plan that they used in 2012 and the Rugby World Cup in 2011, then I think Beric Barnes is the best candidate. But I don't think that's the way the Wallabies can beat the Lions. So for me, it'd be Quade Cooper at 10, and having now rewatched James O'Connor playing 10 for the Wallabies on the 2011 end of year tour, I'm going to change my mind. I think James O'Connor should be the Wallabies number 12. The combination of Cooper and O'Connor would be devastating. Of course, that's all subject to how everybody performs in Super Rugby. But for me, the Wallabies have to attack, and having a 10 and 12 like Cooper and O'Connor would be a great start.